हरिओम हरिओ हरिओ हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स ऑफ्टन आई एम यूजिंग द टर्म प्योर लाइट When I say pure light, I don't mean light that is the opposite of darkness. The first expression of that mystery of existence has three aspects: its pure consciousness, pure energy, pure love. and the combination of these three aspects is what i'm calling pure light this is our home this is prior to manifestation there is there are no opposites and then out of that the manifestation flows and as soon as there is a manifestation there is a polarity light and dark good and bad prior to that is what they call pure light this is our home but if we are coming back to that home through consciousness or through energy or true love it doesn't matter if we sincerely go about it more and more we are capable of connecting with pure light and it's so absolutely necessary <laughs> now of course if we do so our personal life will totally change maybe the external situation don't change much but the way we are perceiving the way we are experiencing is very different if we have that root in the pure light then suddenly things are not more so important we become aware that things are not as real as they are here they come They are there a moment. They go. We deal with them. We play our role in it. But that pure light is not changing. Come back home. <laughs> Live in that pure light. Be that pure light. Radiate that pure light. and there is a joyousness in it that is simply inherent it's not produced by something if we live in that pure light then the joyousness of existence is simply there it's not coming and going it's not <coughs> present when the circumstances are nice and absent when the circumstances are not nice it's simply there if you live like this your life is joyous and you making a great wonderful contribution to the common consciousness to the collective consciousness of the human race to the collective consciousness of all the living beings on earth 
and ultimately connected to the collective consciousness of all there is. And here on earth there is so much turmoil going on that the consciousness is also very agitated and everyone who is striving, even attempting to connect and leave from that pure light perspective, from that pure light state, is radiating something wonderfully into the collective. And one individual who is doing so is so much stronger than in the influence of the collective than a whole mass of people who are asleep, who just are being swept along by the current of events, not aware what is happening to them, not aware how much they are not really taking free decisions as they think, but are simply pushed and pulled by energies they are not, uh, they are not perceiving, they are not aware of. One individual who is connecting with pure light is making such a great contribution in the collective that it's neutralizing the negativity of many people who are half asleep. What is happening now on earth is really the turmoil that comes with a state of transition. But right now, if we look around, if we inform ourselves what's going on, not listening to the mainstream information, but going into the alternative information, then one can despair and think, oh God, this is terrible. It's, it seems to be hopeless where the whole story is going. But this is just a momentary phase in a transition. It's a bit similar what happened to me in my personal story. I kept on practicing, I kept on struggling. And then there came a time of transition and everything seemed to fall apart. Everything that I have been struggling for seemed to go down the drain. It looked like it's, it's becoming absolutely hopeless for some time. Simply, as long as I struggled and resisted the fact that it is as it is, and when I stopped, things calmed down and a new, beautiful, peaceful, much faster experience could emerge from that. Something similar is going on now for all the living beings on earth. Right now, if we really observe what powers are there that control and try to take total control and what their intentions are, it can look totally hopeless and think, no, it's just getting from bad to worse. This is just a momentary phase. This is not where it is really going. Most probably it's necessary to shake up the existing structures enough that people start to open up, that people start to see, hey, there is a completely different way of existing. So let's not get this disheartened when we look around and see what's going on, 
it's just a temporary phase humanity has to go through. And everyone who brings the attention back home to that pure light is contributing to make that transition faster and smoother. It's good for each one when they do it, because the life becomes much more light and joyous and radiant. And it's the best we can do in the present situation to help humanity on in that struggle, in that transition phase. <clears throat> we may have all kinds of goals in our life, things that we want to achieve, that's fine. If we don't take it too serious, if we don't get obsessed with it, we can still do that. But no matter what we are doing, it's good to remember what matters most is that we consciously, consciously bring the attention back to that base, the base that I'm calling pure light. Leave in it, be it, radiate it. All right, I stop just talking away like this, <laughs> asking you, my friends, is there anyone who would like to come in and say something? You are welcome. Crow, you want to say something? <laughs> They shut him up. <laughs> oh. Okay, nobody comes in. Let me tell you something that happened in the last public sata. There was the question, psychology and spirituality. Are they really two totally different things? Are they the same? Are they connected? Because some teachers, they say strictly there is psychology and there is spirituality and they are completely different things. They have nothing to do one with the other. And I cannot agree to that. Of course, spirituality goes beyond psychology. But psychology is also a part of that spiritual development. We cannot just push that away and separate it. Because if an individual is full of psychological tensions, full of psychological contradictions, there is very little chance that one is capable to go beyond that level. So it makes sense. Even if we are not having obviously psychological problems, it makes sense to have a good, honest look at oneself and see how the psyche is functioning. Because when we do so, we become aware what are the obstacles, obstacles that we keep on creating all the time with our mind that prevent us from coming back home to our natural state. So we cannot separate psychology, but of course, except that psychology is just an aspect and spirituality goes way beyond that. 
we are no different. And then one psychologist asked me, but then uh, I'm a psychologist and is it okay that I'm doing my job with people? Yes, of course it is okay if a psychologist helps people with their psychological problems. But even then, it's good for that psychologist to be aware the most important thing is to make order in one's own mind. And when I said that, the question came back, what does it mean to make order in one's own mind? It means simply that we learn to be honest. It means simply that we learn to be alert. It means simply that we start to see what is really going on how much tensions we are creating, how we often simultaneously want to go left and want to go right, how we often simultaneously want something and don't want something, how many crutches we are keeping in our mind, the people who have done something in our life and we still hold on and keep and boiling anger when we think of it. How many frustrations we simply pushed in the subconscious instead of neutralizing them. Desires that we have, dreams that we have that cannot be fulfilled and then getting very frustrated about it and then in order to deal with it instead of seeing what we are doing and let them go, we have the tendency to suppress them, push them in the subconscious. All that is boiling, nagging, struggling, creating tensions that prevent us from being in our natural state. And if we honestly start to look at ourselves, we see that we are doing all that, that we keep on doing. And we stop putting the responsibility on everybody else. We stop putting the responsibility on our parents at the society or God or the universe and see, okay, they may all have contributed that certain patterns have been formed in my psyche but it's I who keep them alive. I keep on repeating the same patterns over and over, and it keeps on creating those barriers that seem to be so unsurmountable if we don't look at ourselves honestly and see that we are creating them, and then simply learn not to do that anymore. That is what I mean making order in our own mind. And it's part of the spiritual work. It's part of the spiritual approach that we learn to see what's going on and learn to let go everything that is preventing us from being in our natural, expansive state. There is a lot of the modern Advaita teaching telling people, you are already dead, so don't you worry about your mind. No, you need not to worry about your mind. But you can also not neglect what is happening there, simply believing, okay, I'm already dead, but still continuing with my mental patterns that keep on creating pain creating suffering can give intellectually a bit satisfaction. People can become somewhat complacent, but that nagging will not stop. Real peace is not possible as long as we boil 
in the on the mental level as long as all those struggles are going on and it's anyone is very well advised to really sincerely look at it not simply brush it away it's just the mind it has nothing to do with the self it's in the mind that we are creating suffering it's in the mind that we are creating the sense of bondage and separation and it's that same mind that has to be cleared at least to some extent that we become capable of detaching from that level. Giving up those mental obsessions and bring the attention back to the ground, to the base, to that pure light I've been talking about. I'm asking you again, is there anyone who would like to come in and say something? You're welcome to do so. Hi, Werner. Oh, I Hi. see Andreas came in. Yeah, it's oh, all right. Okay. You can start. <laughs> Hello, Lila. Yeah. I'm sorry I wasn't here from the beginning. It sounds like uh, I missed some uh, important, uh, not important, interesting, I would say, but yeah, I came a bit late. So um, now you spoke about mental um, formations or habits. Yeah, that's how you said it. Patterns, I said. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And letting go of... Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. So I'll just mention it, something about my sister, and uh, I just wonder, it's becoming worse and worse. And um, part of it is, of course, the mental habits or formations and all the past, and part of it is actually what is happening in any interaction we have now and she's deteriorating also towards dimension or something she's yeah. not happy yeah so so the letting go here is also letting go of the hope <laughs> that that it can be okay but as I said, it's, it, I'm afraid it can't be okay because it's quite uncomfortable and also dukkha when we speak. Mm. I can't help her. I can't really do anything for her. She's blocked emotionally. Mm. So you, of course we can say that, okay, this is what you believe. Maybe if you go the other way around, maybe you feel different things, but... I'm afraid in this case it's uh, rather, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, yeah. So the letting go, as I said, is also of the whole that we can go on being sisters, what we've never really been before, but somehow we managed to. I mean, we are sisters biologically, but uh, emotionally it has always been uh, complicated as we didn't grow together, actually. So again, the pain and the letting go of the hope <laughs> is difficult. Even though I feel I can let go of the story somehow, the mental formations about it but I, I feel I have to let go of the hope that it can be okay and it's dukkha as I said I, I really have to be very careful because she becomes very aggressive and uh, you know, all kinds of stuff so. you can very well still be open to the possibility that suddenly it may be different 
little miracles may happen. <laughs> but <laughs> but you need not somehow fix your idea that it has to happen. Because then you bring tension in your own life and that tension also is coming in when you approach her and then suddenly that is one more aspect that makes it not possible that it can happen. Yeah. You still can basically have that sense of openness. Maybe suddenly it goes. And then basically accept her the way he e she is. Accept that she is, that she behaves the way she behaves and not think it should be different and then it would be possible that we connect. And when you connect mm. with her, be rooted in yourself and let that benevolence that comes from one's own self flow out towards her and then deal with her as good as you can. And sometimes it may be disastrous and sometimes it may be okay. But in that way, you at least leave the possibility that it could change to the better. On top of that, you're not getting frustrated if you if you are not full of expectations that it should be better, then you are not frustrated if it's a bit disastrous, the communication. Yeah, so here comes the question. Actually, I wonder how much um, I, I, I can be, I wonder how much I can help her or be good to her when it seems like she actually is not in the state of, of accepting love or care. She's very tough and very, so she, she, she sees it otherwise around. <laughs> so actually I'll say that very blunt, what's the point really? Mm. That it's, um, It's no help for her, really. Mm. Actually, I... she doesn't want me. She she somehow, because how she developed emotionally and whatever, it seems like she actually doesn't need me to yeah from the to try or from the external circumstances you are not obliged to to connect with her. It's not that you have to take, uh, I'm asking, it's, is it that you have to take care of her or? Um, no, I know, well, I could, but there are, she has children. It's complicated, but she lives on the kibbutz, so they have a, a whole mm. system there where they can. No, I thought about it and I, I took a move all, already in relation to that. I, I did something, I spoke to someone, I, no, so it's not. I don't, uh, I'm not um, obliged to take care of her. Mm -hmm. So it's only showing affection and talking and asking how you are, but then again, it always comes, it, it always gets, I don't have, I don't feel I have the talent or the possibility to, somehow it always happens that there is a, like a blow up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, almost always. And then well, I have to stop it one one second before it happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, then contact only when you feel like contacting, and not out of the mind that tells you uh, I should, I have to. After all, I should. It's my duty. Then connect when you feel like connecting, and connect with that attitude. Uh, okay. I'm not having expectations. I'm just leaving the possibility that it could go more harmoniously and try that you are not getting into your own position that it becomes a power struggle with her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because as honest, as sincere I would be with me, I guess there are still some, as I call them, hooks or places that are like waiting there to 
jump over me and take if over. One puts the finger on it and they pop, they come up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. I guess it's not so easy to let go of, 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 even though I feel I can do it. I guess there's still some, yeah, places of uh, dust or hooks or whatever. Right, and then keep that in mind. And when you connect, connect with the attitude, okay, it's a lesson for me. <laughs> right. That uh, I see yeah, how I'm reacting and I can learn to let go of unnecessary reactions that invariably create again more tensions. Yeah. It's never like her and me. There's always something else that is building up there. Yeah. But somehow I can't control how it's happening. I have yeah. only so much control on, on the results, whatever right. I, I do. So sure. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if it somehow blows up, then never mind. Okay. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> again it came to a, a blow up or or you just could cut off before that but you can just try without expectation and still the openness let's see that there, maybe there is a possibility yeah it takes a um, yeah a deep look in and, and lots of um, sincerity yeah Honesty and sincerity. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Adio. Thank you. Adio. Adio. <laughs> okay, Andreas, you tried to come in before. You want to come in? Ah, oh, yes. There you are. Hello. Hello, Andreas. I mean... I completely agree with everything you said about psychology, but I find it very hard sometimes to see my own mental setup. And even if I see it, I don't get out of it. <laughs> like, like when I when I came first to no, like when I in like yeah, January when I came to Tiruvannamalai, and I sit in the Ramana Ashram. I felt the, the vibration there and I could see how much that there's a subtle negativity in in the way I usually, my mind is set up in a way that it, it's kind of negative and mm. I could really feel the warm and benign energy there. And I thought, <laughs> it's so foolish that I have something different in my mind, but I, I just, I could, then I could get out of it for a while. But you, now it's back again in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But you are aware that it's there. And then if that awareness is there and it pops up, you already know. Aha, uh -huh, I see you. I know you. <laughs> and there you can take steps to detach from it, to step a step back and observe it instead of being in the midst of it, instead of being a subject or a victim of it. And even if you think it doesn't do anything, every time you do so, it does something. And the old habit, the old pattern is some getting a little bit weaker. But the pattern that has been there for a long time is simply not going from one day to another. And it may come back many times, but each time you accept, okay, it's still there. But I see it, I know it, it's there. But you consciously don't let yourself be pulled in the role of the victim of it. But you just observe that it's there, the negativity, the, the judgmentality and all that wants to come up and build up. And then instead of agreeing to it, instead of feeding it, you say, oh, oh I see you. And step a step back and just see the thoughts, just see the energies that it's producing in the body, in the energy field, and relax as good as you can, and the old pattern gradually is getting weaker. It takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I even see things 
but I'm unable to change them. Right, you may not be able to change them at that moment, but you may be able at least to step a step back and observe instead of being just in the midst of it. That already does something. The, the, the very seeing does something. Even if you cannot change them, the very seeing changes. But it may take its own time <laughs> that it happens. I remember after having been with Amma for five years, spending my time sitting on my bum, I complained to her that it's all right, I can sit, sometimes it's peaceful, but then when I sit, uh, uh, I can somehow control my old, old patterns, but then I get up and somebody insults me and whoom, so <laughs> there I'm reacting like I always react. So what's the use? It's, it's, it's still there. And she said, at least now you are aware of it. <laughs> and actually that makes all the difference. If you are aware of it, then you are not so happy with it. And that very, that very distaste that is there when you see it's there actually when we are not starting to fight with it, but just see it's there and mm, have that distaste for it, that starts to the process of detachment from it. And gradually it's losing its power. Just don't get disheartened if you see it and you cannot simply change it. <laughs> okay. Mm. We have to have patience, even if we don't like so much to have patience. <laughs> but these things, they have been built up and become stronger in time. And in time, we can make them less strong and eventually detach from them that they lose their power. Yeah, it takes quite long. Long is relative. <laughs> when we are in the midst of it, everything seems very long. <laughs> Once you are out of it, then suddenly it doesn't matter how much time it took. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Hario. 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 Oh. Okay, is there anybody else who would like to come in? Whatever obstacles we see on the way, however strong they seem to be, Just don't give up. I think I cannot change that. It's not that we have to change all the mental patterns that are there. There are a, num a lot of mental patterns that are not disturbing. So there is no reason why we should go after them and mold them into something else. But there are those patterns that invariably create pain, that invariably create tensions, that invariably make us suffer. And often those around also. <laughs> and they are real obstacles of just being in the natural, relaxed state. Most of the people have not even an idea what is really happening in their mind. And then, when we start to become more observative, more alert, more spiritual, <laughs> there we become more and more aware. 
and it's often not a nice picture what we are seeing, which often also is not <laughs> very pleasant to experience because we like to have a nice image of, of ourselves. But if we honestly look what's really going on, then many times we have to accept, oh, wow, wow, wow. It doesn't look as wonderful as we would like it to look. <laughs> but then we can learn to accept that is there. It is as it is, but not as a victim. Not that so, that's how I am. I cannot do anything about it. Yes, I can do something about it. Unconsciously, I did a lot to create those habits, those patterns, and we can consciously undo them. And it's not so much that we have to see them and then somehow through one magic turn them around and then they are gone. It doesn't work like that. It's not that we have to start to fight with them all the time, but simply be aware, however unpleasant it is, to look at those aspects in ourselves that we don't like, it's worth the trouble. Do not deny them, to see them and the very seeing how they are working, the very observing how with those patterns we keep on creating and recreating and always recreating the same obstacles that actually we really want to get rid of, then that very seeing starts already to change something. Then we can make a sankalpa, we can intend that certain pattern is getting weaker, that it's letting go, that we are not more being pushed by that. Nothing wrong putting that intent in the current. At the same time, we can be realistic. Okay. Nevertheless, it's still there. It still has its power over our experience. And then be just alert. When it pops up the head, that instead of just hooking into it and being swept away by it, can just look at it. I see you. <laughs> I see what's going on. Then not even try too much to do something to change it at that moment, but just be in that position of observing. And when we start to honestly observe what really is happening, when those patterns manifest, then all by itself, we become aware how unnecessary they are, how destructive they are. And being aware of that is already make the first step to change them. And if we are keeping up that sincerity, if we are keeping up that alertness, then gradually, as they come up, they are losing their power because we are in a way not more playing alone. We let them come, let them do their mischief, at the same time not being the one who thinks I'm doing those mischiefs, but observing how out of old habit things are happening that are unfavorable. And then just by observing and relaxing, that energy that is locked into it starts to dissipate. Strong patterns will take their own time. But if we keep up, if we have, if we have that sincerity, if we have that perseverance to continue doing so, then even the strongest tendency that create suffering can be removed. We just don't have 
uh, we just have don't have to get frustrated by thinking ah I see it and still it doesn't change subtly it does change by simply seeing it and if we keep on observing like this then the process may be quite gentle and we are not so much aware necessarily that things are starting to dissolve and drop off. But suddenly then situations come along and then with surprise sometimes we may recognize, ah, oh, but after all, something has changed because previous in the same situation invariably I would have reacted strongly and gotten into a new story that creates new reactions from an opposite from the people around that creates again new <laughs> reactions in me and go on and on and on like this. Suddenly we may start to observe, ah, huh. yes, this situation that was previous capable of really rattling me and capable of just seeing it, observing, and then let it go and drop it. That's how it goes. These signs, they are subtle, they are gentle, and we may sometimes think with all the energy and time I have invested, this is so little this is so nothing but actually it's much more than what we think <laughs> when we start to observe oh really actually something seems to profoundly change that destructive habits that have been so powerful are getting weaker and weaker and come up less and less and finally they are simply not more strong enough to create any problems that sincerity, that patience, that perseverance that we need. And it's not something that uh, simply somehow we can hope eventually it's falling down from heaven on our shoulders. It's by every time things come up like this, we make a new step and all those little steps that we are capable of making eventually they start to manifest and then things that used to be so impossible things that used to be just utterly unmanageable can become simple and easy Never give up, never feel disappointed. I mean, momentarily there may be a disappointment. If we want to let go something, it doesn't go as good as we want. Want a moment there may be disappointed, but that should not be an occasion that we really give up and then let the situations, what is happening, pull our attention into a very dark and gloomy place but it should be again an incentive that we can again newly decide okay it has been there it has been troubling me a lot in my life and it's still there okay accept it as a fact and you renew the intent but it need not go on it need not go on forever and ever. I keep that alertness and I persevere. And if that decision is there, then already, uh, even when things are still there and not going so easily, it's not more such a problem as we often think it is. <clears throat> I'm asking you again. Anyone there who would like to say something, you're welcome to come in.
Yeah, it's me again. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so I just wonder what I feel is that um, at least I'm very talented in uh, using, I mean, the mind my, is very talented to, even though I feel I'm really sincere and in looking into myself, um, the mind is talented to cover up and to, to change the story or to change yeah. somehow yes the facts let's say there are yeah. facts so recently i've been feeling that maybe the best way to know is what the bad body tells me yes if the body it becomes um restless or painful or tight or something maybe then something is wrong Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not um, looking deep inside or maybe I still need these uh, conflicts or the mind is, um, habits. And when the body is relaxed, even though maybe the mind tells me that maybe I did something wrong, but maybe I said something wrong or something, if the body is relaxed relatively, then maybe it's okay. <laughs> or if the mind continues to, after the event, if the mind continues to chew on, on, on the event, on the facts, then also it means that I wasn't Connected enough, I wasn't sincere enough, rooted, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. The mind has the, the, the mind is very mm. talented in. Tricky. <laughs> in what? Tricky, very tricky. Tricky, very tricky, yeah, very yes. tricky. And <laughs> it's not me who is doing it, it's, it's, yeah, it's really. <laughs> It's habits. I know it, it's habits, but still the mind is very tricky. Right. And it's easy to somehow always justify certain things instead of simply saying, no, look, I'm really doing it again. <laughs> yeah. And yes, you're right. Often I'm saying also, instead of then hooking the attention totally to the event and to what brought it about, just turn the attention to the present and see what it is doing to your experience and start on the easiest level, see what it is doing to the body. And whatever is putting up those unnecessary tensions and cramps, we you know, okay, there is really some more work to do. And we can, without mentally too much analyzing and thinking oh there and there I should do something different just see what the effect is there and then start to work on that level start to consciously what? relax the body when... ah, through through that yes to work through the the what my body tells me right then you see yeah. what is happening in the body. You see the tension, the cramps, the, the uh, aggressive blocks that we may make. And then focus on those. Instead of thinking, I have to change the, a pattern. Then focus on those and relax and breathe. And there already we are taking away like the root where this can grow, where this can sprout, and, and the energy also starts to balance out easier when we relax physically. And if we relax physically and energetically, suddenly the mind is clearing up and it's much easier to see mental intellectual contradictions and imbalances and let them also quieten down. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Are you? Are you? Are you? Before that, we can become learn, become a bit playful about it. It's much easier if we every time think, "Oh my God." I've been working on that for so much time, still it's there, <laughs> and get angry with ourselves and get frustrated and start to punish ourselves, then it doesn't help. But if we can accept, okay, there some more work needs to be done and go about it more in a playful way. Okay, so what got me again? It's already the past the situation. But now I can do something about it. I can see what it is doing. I can detach I, and I can on the level where it's creating problems starting with the physical level. We can do consciously, we can consciously relax. Breathe and relax. While seeing what that pattern, what our reactions, what was going on in the head is doing to that physical experience. If we do so, instead of trying on the mental level to somehow turn things around, then actually it's like we are taking the energy out of the destructive element of it. Each time we are doing that, old patterns are getting weaker and losing more and more the power that eventually we come to the point that when we see an old reaction lifting up the head that we can see it and then have the freedom to decide in this particular situation shall I react or shall I just step by step back and let it pass like a puff of air, not leaving a trace. Sometimes we may decide, okay, I'm going to re react, but being aware that this is happening, and then we do it playfully, and then no harm is done. <laughs> okay, my friends. Anyone would like to say something? You're welcome to do so. Dial, I see your name here. I thought you are already in a retreat. <laughs> or are you capable in that retreat to join us? <laughs> Hi, Vierno. Hello. No, I, I will start, start my 25 February. I'm still in Tino, but after tomorrow I'm going back to Russia. No, so you, be oh, you're still in Tino. I thought you have already yes, left. No, <laughs> uh -huh. no, no. Yeah. I'm parking my luggage. Yeah. yeah. But it was very nice time here, and very thank you for your songs. You make everything so clear, so simple, nothing to ask. Mm. You know this is your problem. <laughs> so you are flying tomorrow and then the retreat starts at what time? About day? Um, I fly after tomorrow evening. After tomorrow. Oh. And uh, it starts start 25 February oh. for 30 days. Yeah, for yeah. 30 days. Not, yes, talk, and not talking and a lot of meditation, huh? Yes, yes. Separate room, separate cell. Yeah. Uh, actually, perfect condition. Oh. Much better than here in India. I will have the conditions. Yeah. Only I afraid such a long time hmm. with no communication. Right. Uh, yes, it's usually not easy. So we'll. Uh, we shall not see you 
during that time. <laughs> yeah, but the next time on online exam uh, Saturday, yeah, probably Saturday I would I will be next. Yeah. Online satsang. Yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then yes. wish you a good mm -hmm. journey. <laughs> yeah, thank you Yadav, because of your support. I just decided to do that. I'm able to start. Let's see what's happening. It's and I now feel much more, much more relaxed in meditation, not pushing myself. Yeah, yeah it's that's very good. helpful advice to relax, mm. be easy, natural, yes, and have patience. Yeah. So everything you might clear. Yeah, I cannot ask anything. Just yeah. make myself available. Right. Yes, and Great. You know, nothing else. Thank you, Bernard. Yeah, you. you're welcome. <laughs> I wish you well in that retreat in case we don't see before. Yes, yes, thank you. Ario, Ario. Ario. Is there anyone who would like to come? Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Hmm. Yeah, I want to uh, talk a little about pain. Yeah. Uh, I recently had this experience to go through the strong pain because yeah. of my yeah removal of my with, wisdom tools. <laughs> yeah. Yes, didn't know about these consequences uh, that they are possible. Yeah. And uh, really, it's when pain is so strong, it's very difficult to to meditate, to put in attention to anything mm. else except this pain. Yeah. And um, I see that I, uh, from my childhood, I I didn't want to be dependent of some uh, tablets. <laughs> some yeah. Yeah. Sense, yes. <laughs> And especially some antibiotics, uh, but a doctor said me to take them. And I tried to do some, to take some natural uh, um, things, but they really didn't help me. And I had to surrender and accept mm -hmm. these antibiotics. And it was a really uh, experience to, of exception for me, but I I did it and uh, okay if it's necessary I I saw that I can't suffer so much because of this pain yeah. uh, but I think uh, a lot about some situations and people who maybe don't have some medicines and have this strong pain or uh, they don't as in my case I still can open my mouth normally to eat it's still i feel some some uh, a bit myself as disabled that i can only eat with a small small spoon only a very uh, smoothie food <laughs> yes and but i think that uh, some people maybe live like this all the time mm. because Yes, there are some different situations and sometimes people don't have some uh, medicines. Yes, and uh, feel this awful pain. Yes, it, is, uh, it touched me. Yes, maybe mm. you tell something about it. Right, of course, strong pain that is sustained and goes on and on and on is a hard thing to take. Anyhow, in your case, you know, even if it's very unbearable, sometimes it's temporary. After some time, it will be gone and it's fine. But you are talking of people who may have pain and it's a chronic pain and it just goes on. At least that's what I understood you are talking about. And of course, that is a very difficult situation to accept. Nevertheless, this 
is the most powerful way to deal with a situation like this, that we can muster up that acceptance. Because as long as we are resisting against the fact that there is pain, then the pain becomes totally unbearable. But if we have that capacity to accept, okay, it's paining, and it may be paining a lot, but then accept it and make the best you can with the situation, then actually this is a very powerful spiritual exercise and makes the one who is doing so very strong. That if we connect in spite of the obstacle of strong physical pain, then that connection is very powerful and is very strengthening. People who go through things like this, then after that they come out much, much stronger. So it's worth the trouble, even in very painful situations, learn to accept that it's there. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong if there are strong pains like you describe from pulling out a tooth. One or two? <laughs> you put... One. I, he said, come in two days and we'll remove the other one. But, in, <laughs> but <laughs> I couldn't open, still I can't open my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only one. He said maybe this is some unknown bacteria for my, uh, for my, uh, how uh -huh. to say, <laughs> for my body. That's why this reaction happened. Yeah, yeah. Because he really is yes, strong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyhow, that capacity then to accept that it is, is the most beneficial way to deal with it. But then there's nothing wrong in that situation if one takes some medicine to, to smoothen it, that uh, the time is easier. But sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes people have pain and they take whatever they like and the pain is not affected by it. And then it's really a hard challenge, but the hard challenge is still a challenge that we can accept and deal with it as good as we can. Sometimes, some moments, it may overtake the person and thinks I can't anymore, but then the strength comes back and, no, no, I go on. And if we have that positive spirit, and if we have that capacity of accepting, all right, it is as it is, not as a victim. I'm a poor little fellow and it is as it is, but it is as it is, and I still can make the best out of the situation. Then accepting physical pain will drive your attention that much deeper into your own resources. Yes, yeah. Yeah, before this situation, I I thought that physical pain is not so uh, strong for me as emotion, no, yeah. because it really comes and, and goes. And mm. if I had some temperature or weakness or even some pain, I usually I understood that it finished somehow, somewhere. Yeah. Yes, but this time it was harder for me and yeah I of, even couldn't uh, yes. of course we have our limits what we can bear <laughs> but that limit is getting larger and larger the better we are capable of accepting the situation accepting it as a challenge to go deeper and even if uh, <clears throat> a lot of the time it's just not happening, it's just not possible to really consciously connect where the very attempt is already doing something. And then those times where it's happening, where it's working to consciously connect in spite of the pain, those moments are very, very valuable. <laughs> yeah. And I've watched this point where I could 
uh, feel patient and where the suffer comes. So first I was trying not to take this medicines, I was trying to do Reiki, to just to feel, just mm -hmm. to breathe. Yeah. But then I found myself that I really suffering and yeah. And I said, why should I do this? Yes, yes. I, I would better take this medicine even if I don't like it. But really, it, yes, I saw this point that it was necessary mm -hmm. in my, as I, as I felt, yeah. Right, right. Yes. If the if the situation offers that we can somehow reduce the pain, there is absolutely nothing wrong doing so. It still will be a challenge, even if we have medicines like this. When there is a strong pain like this, is still bothering <laughs> enough that you have enough enough possibilities to face the challenge and to learn to instead of fighting, fighting, fighting with the fact of, of the experience, use that experience to help to bring the attention that much stronger back to the source. Mm. Mm. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Wish you well. Arion. <laughs> Some mystics have been using that, that accepting pain is helping to go much deeper. In the Middle Ages, many Christian mystics, they did all kinds of terrible things to themselves. It's certainly not an approach I would recommend, because there are very few who can then do it, that they really, really go deeper. Many people who try to do so, then they just become more and more bitter. Starting to hate everybody who is enjoying their life. <laughs> but still, there has been mystics who have been doing all kinds of painful physical things to themselves that, does, that didn't come in their destiny naturally, but they did it consciously to themselves in order to go deeper and some of them really succeeded. <laughs> like John of the Cross, he did that very secretly. The, you know, they, they, they had this kind of torture belt at the times that sometimes Monks were using, monks and nuns were using either to punish themselves for a sin they have done or simply trying to use that to <clears throat> go beyond the flesh as they thought it. And these torture belts were just belts that you put on and then there were these little nails sticking in the body and, and stuff like that. And when John of the Cross died, they, they became aware that he was wearing since a long time such a torture belt all the time that actually partly the skin has grown over it that he was had grown in his body. Now, as I said before, I absolutely would not recommend people to torture themselves to create pain unnecessarily in their body. Simply, I mention it in the context that it is possible, even strong pains, strong discomforts, if we can accept them, then actually they may bring the attention really deep in our own resources. We don't have to create, look for pain, but sometimes pain is unavoidable. And at those times, when the pain comes, then it's good to have that positive attitude that, because otherwise it becomes unbearable. 
if we just resist against the fact that the pain is there, then even relatively small pains, they become unbearable. If it pulls us into self-pity, the poor me that has to endure that and resist against the fact that it is so, then it becomes, we feeding our life energy into it and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as an experience. On the other hand, if we can have that courage, okay, I need not create unnecessary pain, but this pain I cannot avoid. And as long as the body there, sometimes it hurts. As long as the body is there, some, sometimes it hurts. And if we can accept those situations, even if it's strong pain, if at least we attempt to consciously accept, then this is so totally against the mechanism of the me, 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 me personality who wants to have everything sweet and nice and beautiful <laughs> and doesn't want any discomfort. So the me personality will immediately have the tendency to react and say, no, 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 it shouldn't be like this, shouldn't be like this. It, the very fact that we are getting around that reaction, that we forget go that reaction and are capable of accepting physical pain, then that very fact is opening like the gate to dive deeper into the essence. And every time somebody is doing that, they are coming out of that much stronger. As I said to Nelly, absolutely nothing wrong if there are strong pains and painkillers can help us, some medicines can help us, by all means, it will still be enough of a challenge in spite of that. But we can be careful not to slip into that negative, destructive mood of as building up pity for ourselves, poor me, poor me, that is always draining all our beautiful life force out of the situation. And then we become real victims. And victim mode is never helpful in absolutely no situation. <clears throat> Okay, is there anybody who still would like to come in? You're welcome to do so. Yes. It's... Would you say that maybe we have some kind of, um, of addiction or addiction to suffering or something in us feels that maybe there is Maybe it gives us meaning of life. Maybe somehow, for some reason, we are built so that we choose to suffer rather than to be happy. Yes. It has... Is it our tendency that there, there is some kind of benefit, benefit, as I said, from suffering and it gives us yeah, mm. meaning and yeah. It is not a natural tendency that should be there, mm -hmm. but it's a tendency that is very much there because we grew up in a society where this is very much uh, pushed, that somehow we should suffer in order to get somewhere. We should suffer in order to please God. We should suffer in order to punish ourselves because we are sinners. And, uh, this is much deeper than people are realizing, even if they detach a bit from that organized religion and, and go for meditation and go for other things, these things have been deeply ingrained and somehow something in the mind doesn't so easily 
give it up partly out of fear. If I just am happy, then uh, where is my spiritual benefit? <laughs> if no, where I'm... is my base when I'm happy? Where is my base? <laughs> where is my ground? Yeah, and, uh, and the fear that uh, we are then not doing our duty, that we are not doing our job, which is completely nuts, but it's deeply inside. I remember that I myself had to somehow, when I started to become happier and happier, and there was that uh, a lot of hesitation and the feeling, cannot, I cannot simply be happy. So it's not <laughs> as if it was unethical, but it's nonsense. Happiness is our natural state. And we just have been conditioned that it shouldn't be like this, that in order to be a good devotee and, uh, and live our life sincerely towards God, we have to suffer. It doesn't have to be like that. Unpleasant situations cannot be avoided. As I just said before, physical pain, as long as the body is there, cannot be avoided. Sometimes it hurts. But nobody compels us to suffer if we learn not to resist all the time and create that mental anguish, then we are not suffering and we need not suffer. Suffering has, in that sense, its place and it can be beneficial. It's a wake-up call that people finally get fed up enough with suffering and learn to have a good look at themselves and decide, no, I don't want to suffer anymore. Then the, the, the fact that we have suffered may be the pushing thing that we start to try to go deeper. But to keep that attitude that suffering is very noble is some uh, sick thing that has been put in our psyche and it's there all pervading in the society, especially in the society that has grown out of the three Semitic religions, the Jewish and the Christian and the Muslim religions, they have all that thing. That, I mean, the Christian, the Christian image, what is there? Their God hangs on the cross for heaven's sake. <laughs> it's, it, it gives the people all the time that idea, suffering for the benefit of others, suffering somehow or other, uh, that is what is needed, that what God want, wants, and it's a complete wrong attitude. Because it's so deeply ingrained, sometimes it's difficult to accept that it is not necessary. If we are fed up with suffering, we can learn to see how we are creating it and then learn not to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, quite a job. <laughs> quite a job. <laughs> Right. Yeah. This, uh, this world is like this. It's a, it's a working place. <laughs> it's not a holiday place. We came here to face challenges and learn and grow in course of the process. Yeah, I just will add one more sentence from the situation now in Israel. Somehow it's been going on for a long time and everybody has been suffering and sad and pain and everything. But I wonder when, when people ask each other, how are you? And sometimes I, I can say, I'm fine, but you know. Mm -hmm. why? And just to remind them that I'm fine, but it doesn't mean that I forgot how other people suffer or they suffer more or whatever. Right. Why can't they just say, right now I'm fine and I'm yes. grateful? Because that bad I, conscience comes in and think, how can I just be fine like, in this yeah, situation? Yeah, yeah. Right. I have been suffering a lot and I will be suffering. Yeah, there is a lot of pain around. and mm. But still, there are moments when I can just say, I'm fine right now. I'm fine. Right. It's okay. It's okay. It's difficult. 
<laughs> it's typical, yeah. difficult because of the old conditioning. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hario. Hario. I started this satang saying pure light. Pure light is your home. Pure light is the base. And there is a natural joyousness in it. It doesn't have to be created. And it's our birthright to live like this. It's our birthright to be conscious of it. To, it's our birthright to joyously go from day to day being aware of that joyous, essential existence and radiate it and express it constructively. It's just that the world has taught us different and we may have to make an effort to let go of all that burden of conditioning to simply learn to become natural, to be natural, to live naturally and express that inner beauty and that inner joy no matter where we are. I wish you all well. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om.